I had a really, really good childhood. I grew up in New Jersey. Um, I have an older brother, so I was just a, a rambunctious kid, you know, following my brother around, playing all type of sports and getting into trouble. Really, from an early age, my parents um, put me into soccer when I was six years old. They wanted to get me out of the house, and um, you know, I was running around, like I said, you know, tearing the house down. So they're like, right, well, you need to get out and do something. And so they put me in, into soccer at age six. I played. Everywhere, really. I played in the outfield. I played defender. I played striker. I played goalkeeper. You know, I was a big kid. I was, I was really tall for my age. So, you know, coaches used to make deals with me. So if you play one, you know, the first half in goal, we'll, we'll let you play striker or something. So, but I always loved it. I had a passion for goalkeeping. I think goalkeepers are, are by nature pretty quirky. You know, you have to. I, I always say when. Uh, you know, the average person, when, a, when an object is coming at them 70 miles an hour, you know, your, your, your instinct is to get out of the way, you know, and goalkeepers are, are asked and taught and demanded that they um, put their body in, har in harm's way. So just by that alone, uh, it's a different position. And I think it's, a, you know, it's described as a lonely position. You have to be able to um, have broad shoulders and a short memory. And, and you know, it's, uh, there, is no, there is no room for error. The time that I had two broken fingers and and I had broken my back, it was I'm just not accustomed to coming off the field, and I don't I don't enjoy. It. And I feel like I owe my team and my supporters and my club um, everything I have, you know. And if I can if I can uh, be out there and I'm not a detriment to the team, then I want to be out there, you know. I, I'll deal with the pain, and uh, the adrenaline helps me do that. With me, TS manifested itself when I was nine years old, which is right about the time that it, it, it often does. I, I was a kid who was enjoying life and I kind of noticed something was different, but it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't debilitating. It was more that my family noticed it and they wanted to kind of figure out what exactly was going on. I, I just got on with life, really. I was, went to school, I had good friends, I played sports, so my day-to-day -day wasn't any different. You know, when it comes to dealing with TS, it's just having that, uh, it's not easy, but, you know, being self-assured and, um, you know, for me that, that, that was a life lesson because I've taken that with me everywhere I've gone is to just have that belief in myself and you know it also has given me um, the ability to understand other people's plights and what they deal with and um, have compassion for that. For me creating awareness has been easy because I've, I have an amazing platform you know I'm, I'm very comfortable with myself in my own skin and if that means you know I go out on a Saturday and I have a few ticks or twitches I, that you know there's millions of people around the world who see that so um, it's actually a really easy platform uh, and, and one that I'm proud of. I'm in love with the art of tattooing and um, I just it, it's something that's that's captivated me for a long time and I've got it's probably due in large part to uh, some of the artists that I've worked with. There are days when I wake up and I just phone one of my artists and and I get something done there's other times where I have this long process of, of designing it, and I, I've, I've, I've long since stopped the designing process. I give that to the professionals, and they usually come up with something amazing. So, you know, I think my portraits are, are the most special to me. Um, you know, I have, I have a portrait of my mom when she was a kid, and my grandfather in the military, and my children. Um, you know, I, I just think it's, you know, when it comes to tattooing, that is such a, a specific, um, a specific way of tattooing that it, not anyone can do it and it has to be really really well done so th those are special to me my favorite drink is uh el Himador soda and lime i like to drink it with uh, with good friends <laughs> with good music uh, a little bit of soda and lime and you know for me that's a good night watching sports laughing um you know it, i love i love boxing and mixed martial arts and uh, of course soccer you know um I grew, I grew up uh, a huge Giants fan, so American football is important to me as well. The easy answer for why I back uh, El Himador is, is the craftsmanship, is the um, the pursuit of perfection and making making the, the best tequila possible. That's that strikes a chord with me. Um, it's it's what I try and do every day, you know, always striving to to be the best. You know, never resting until I, I finally get there. And um, that's, those are things that are important to me and, and have always been. Of course, it's about not taking shortcuts. And I, I've, I've had a long and what I consider to be successful career. And, and you know, again, that's something that I've had to do. I, you never get to the top 
um, by taking shortcuts. You know, it takes a lot of hard work, and it's something you have to do day in and day out. And um, if it were if it were easy, everyone would do it, but clearly it's not. Uh, one of the things I love about drinking El Himidor is uh, it takes me to a good place. You know, it takes me it takes me to the beach, reminds me of Mexico, good times, and um, that's one of my favorite parts about it. My craft, in, in terms of goalkeeping, um, takes hard work, takes dedication. Um, you know, I have to be there day in and day out, trying to perfect my craft the same way the Himidors do um, as they harvest the agave.